story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. I work here. It was Tuesday, June 12th. It was hot in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of auto theft division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Nelson. My name's Friday. The recovery rate of stolen automobiles had dropped far below normal. Evidence pointed to an organized gang of car thieves. We had to break it up. Friday. You alone, Joe? Just my partner. Anybody else? No, just us. Get in quick. Can't be too careful. Why? What's the matter? Landlady. Oh? Yeah, she saw me doing the washing. She said she'd throw me out of here if she ever caught me at it again. Oh. You know, a high class of palm would have an automatic washer. But not this old bat. Sure. It's going out pretty good. You want to see me about something, Joe? Yeah, just a couple of questions. I'm not in the fire, am I? Not with us. You still working at the garage? Night shift. And checking at four. This got something to do with my job? Oh, well, we figured maybe you could give us a hand. That's a switch. What are you looking for? A lot of cars going someplace lately. We're trying to find out where and who's driving them. Thought maybe you might have heard a rumble. You got anything? Wouldn't do any good if it goes outside. Well, we won't open the door. There's supposed to be three people in on it. What do you know about them? Two men and a woman. They say the two fellas are heavy. Any names? Nope. They're playing it close to the chest. Even the rumble's not solid. Uh-huh. A couple of days ago, I talked to a guy down at the garage. He was telling me about the operation, said it was big. Does he know the people? Well enough that he tried to get a piece of the action, but they're not cutting it up. Can we talk to this guy? I can't stop you, but I can't give you a hand either. What do you mean? Can't tell you where to find him. Does he come around the garage much? Once in a while, nothing regular. What's he do for a living? Drives. Oh. Stock car races. Has he got a name? Everybody calls him Tops, that's all I know about him. Did he give you any details on the operation? I didn't ask for him. I figure the less I know about deals like this, the less trouble I'll get into. Yeah. Any word on what they're doing with the cars? I didn't hear none. They turn it up? No, not where we can find them. They're scoring pretty good, huh? Too good. What's the pattern? Well, the cars are taken in the early morning hours from in front of the owner's houses. Jumper wires? Probably. All eight models. They don't touch anything that isn't fully equipped. Any special make? No. As long as the car has a radio and a heater, white sidewalls, they want it. wonder where they're getting rid of them. You tell us. Out of the country, maybe. No, it doesn't figure, Whitey. We've had the border checked. San Diego's working on that. Two of the jobs we had the broadcast out within a half hour after the car was taken couldn't turn anything. They just seemed to disappear. Well, they must have a big parking lot. You said the two men were heavy, huh? That's right. Well, how'd you come up with that? The guy who told me the story. This fella Tops? Yeah. When he asked for a piece of the action, the roof fell in. What do you mean? Guy got real rough, so there wasn't going to be any split. Mm-hmm. Showed Tops a gun, said if anything about the operation got out, he'd use it. Did you get a description of these men? No. Does Tops fella tell you where they hang out? Uh-uh. Okay, Whitey. If you hear from him again, let us know, will you? Sure. Call you at the office? If you would. Wish I could give you more. I'll nose around and see what I can pick up. We'll appreciate that. Might have something for you the next couple of days. Well, if you do, it'll put you way ahead. Huh? We've been on it two weeks now. We got nothing. <laughs> The first theft had occurred on Saturday, May 26th. Since then, 24 more automobiles had been stolen. In each theft, the same M.O. occurred. Possible outlets for stolen cars had been kept under 24-hour surveillance. The stats office had made runs on each theft and the general M.O. When the list was returned to us and checked, we were no closer to the suspects. 
Frank and I ran the name and the description of the man known as Tops through the moniker file. There was no record on such a person. Two more days passed. Another car was stolen. People in the vicinity were questioned without result. Saturday, June 16th. Out of that, Smith. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you hold him there? We'll be right out. Yeah, thanks. Joe. Why you just called from the garage? What about? Tops. He just walked in. Frank and I left the police building and drove over to where Wilbur Evanston was employed. Whitey had told Frank on the phone that we could find Tops in the office at the rear of the garage. Your name Tops? Yeah, that's right. Police officers. What's this all about? Just want to talk to you, that's all. Well, I ain't done nothing. No reason to rouse me around. You're not being roused. What's your real name? Roger Grayson. What do you do for a living? When I can get a car, I race. Stock cars? Yeah. Where? Around. Different tracks. You live here in L.A.? Some of the time. What do you do when you're not racing? I make a buck here and there. How? Oh, different jobs, you know, whatever I can pick up. You working now? No. Forget to go back east next week. Think I can line something up. Maybe you've got a lot of time to kill, but I haven't. Why don't you tell me what this is all about so I can get out of here? You ever been arrested? Huh? You heard what I said. Have you ever been in jail? Yeah. What charge? They didn't make it stick. What was it? Grand theft. Auto or money? Auto. Did you do any time? I told you. They didn't make it stick. Where'd all this happen? Idaho. Is that your only arrest? A couple of times for bag. They hold you? No. Give me a floater. Uh -huh. Come on, you guys are after something. What is it? Do you know anything about some car thefts around town lately? You'll have to look someplace else. Let's go downtown. Might be easier to talk there. All right, what do you guys want to know? Whatever you can tell us. Okay. I was in this bowling alley one night. Two fellows came in, had this gal with them. Fellows were both kind of gassed. Uh -huh. Sat down next to me. We were just watching the games. They started talking. I heard one of them mention something about cars. Yeah. My ears stood up. It's like saying something about a new camera around a photographer. As soon as I hear the word cars, I start to listen. Uh-huh. They were having a beef. One of them said something about unloading right away. The other guy said they should wait for a while, dump them all at once. Yeah. Well, he stood there and argued for a while. Then one of them seen I was listening. He leaned over and said something to the other guy. Next thing I knew, I was surrounded. One on each side, leaning on me. Uh-huh. I didn't want any trouble. I could see these two guys had a pocket full of it. I went along with them. What happened? They asked me if I liked what I heard. What'd you say? I told them I didn't hear anything. Said I had very bad ears. Yeah. Well, they didn't believe it. Tried to push me around. Manager came over and they moved away. What happened then? Came back, told me if I said anything, they'd get me. One of them had a gun. He kind of pulled his coat back. I could see it in his belt. Uh-huh. Did you try and cut yourself in on the deal? No. We heard you did. Not true. I told Whitey that, but it never happened. Well, why'd you tell him it did? Trying to be a big man, I guess. Are these two fellas, they hang around this bowling alley all the time? First time I ever saw them there. Where is it? Uh, Hollywood Boulevard near Rossmore. You said something about a woman. Yeah. You sure she was with them? She came in with them, left with them. Did they have a car? Who knows? When they shoved off, I stayed where I was. Figured maybe they were waiting for me. Didn't leave the place until just before two. All right, Grayson, we'd like you to come downtown and look at some mud books, if you would. Well, what's the matter? You'd know them if you saw them again, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd know them. That's not the problem. What is? Well, they'd know me. We took Roger Grayson down to the police building and had him check mud books. He was unable to identify the suspects. We ran his name through the record section and found that he'd had no arrests in the state of California. He was released. Local broadcasts and APBs were put out carrying the description of the suspects which Grayson had given us. Another week passed without result. Monday, June 25th, 2.31 p.m. Where do you live? Well, you should report to the Hollywood station. That's on Wilcox between Sunset and Santa Monica. 
1358 North Wilcox. They'll be glad to take your report. Okay, thanks. What was that all about? Stolen bicycle. Kid left it in front of his house, came back, it was gone. Yes. Yes, sir. I'd like to talk to someone about a car. Come right in. Thank you. Care to sit down? Yes, sir. All right, good. This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. How you do? do? I'm Joel Pennant. All right, Mr. Pennant, what can we do for you? I think I bought a stolen car. <laughs> Why do you think the car was stolen? Well, there's something funny about it, the whole thing. Where's the car now, sir? Outside, down the other street. Would you happen to have a license number? Yes, do you want it? Oh, we'd like to check it out, yes, sir. Yes, I got all the information. Pink slip and... Here it is, here, yes. Thank you, sir. I'll run the make on it. Okay. I hate to put you to so much trouble. That's perfectly all right, sir. It's our job. Sure make me feel silly if I was wrong about this. How'd you happen to buy the car? Well, I own a little place out in the valley, sort of restaurant and cabins for tourists. I see. It's quite a ways out. We don't do too much business, but it's a living and we work pretty hard. Yes, sir. And this fella came in the day before yesterday. It was Saturday. And he sat down, had something to eat, and we started talking. Nothing important. Uh-huh. He said he was on his way back east looking for work. He had a lot of trouble, lost his job and all. Yeah. Well, he had this new car parked outside. And he wanted to know if I knew someone who would take it off his hands at a bargain. Uh -huh. He said he just bought it a couple of weeks ago and paid cash for it and owned it outright. And he felt kind of badly about having to take such a loss on it, but he didn't have dough enough to buy gas for it. I see. Well, I asked him how much he wanted for it, and he quoted me a price $200 under wholesale. Well, that looked like a pretty good deal to me, so I took him up on it. Just like that? No, sir. I was careful. But maybe I wasn't careful enough. A lot of other fellas come in and try to sell me things, and I learned the hard way. So I asked him if he had any proof to show me that he really owned the car. Did he have any proof? Yes. He showed me the pink slip and told me where he bought the car. Prompt the auto service out in Hollywood. Did you contact them? Yes, I put a call through right away. What'd they say? Well, I talked to a couple of secretaries before I got the sales manager. He checked his records and told me the car had been purchased there. He even gave me the man's name who bought it. Uh-huh. It seemed like the guy was a square shooter, pink slip, where he bought the car, everything looked on the up and up. Yes, sir. So I turned the check over to him, and he gave me the car right away. I asked him if I could give him a lift someplace, and he said, no, he was going to hitch a ride, and that he would cash the check Monday. That would be today? Yeah. So I went down to the bank to make a deposit before the check cleared. Yeah. It already had the check. The bank told me it was cashed the minute they opened the doors. And that got me worried, him being so anxious to get the money right away. How about it? It's stolen, all right. I had a feeling. I checked the reports in the M.O. Yeah. Sounds like the gang we're after. While the victim, Joel Pennant, looked through the mug books, Frank and I picked up the check the suspect had cashed. The name on the pink slip, Ralph Prescott, had been run through R&I. They had nothing on him. The check was sent to Larry Sloan in handwriting for analysis. There was no question that the pink slip was a phony. <laughs> We checked the phone book for a listing on the Brompton Auto Service, but we found none. The victim had made a note of the phone number, and from it we were able to obtain the address where the telephone had been installed. It was a large office building on 7th Street. Frank and I talked to the superintendent, Mr. Tad J. Whitney. Al, this is where they were. Uh-huh. When did they move out, do you know? Well, sometime over the weekend. I'm not sure of the day. I'm off Saturday and Sunday. I see. How long do they have the office? couple of weeks, said they wanted it for a month and paid it in advance. Told me if things worked out, they'd take a lease. Yes, sir. Guess things didn't work out. Did they leave any forwarding address? No, not as far as I know. What can you tell us about them? Well, I talked to them a couple of times. They seemed nice enough. What kind of business were they in, did they say? Well, not in so many words. They said they were testing a new product and all their business would be on the phone. Did they pay for the office by check or cash? Cash. They use a name of any kind? I don't think I understand you. Well, did they call each other by name? Yeah, when they were looking the place over. Do you remember what names they used? Uh, let me think a minute. Uh, well, the way it comes to me now, one was called Wesley and the other was Ralph. No last names, though. No, I didn't hear them. What about the woman? Lerner. I remember that when they introduced her. Nikki Lerner. You haven't cleaned the office since they left? 
Well, no, we haven't gotten around to it yet. All right, fine. We'd like to have some men go over the place. Sure. I'll be glad to help any way I can. All right. Can you come downtown and look at some pictures for us? Of criminals? Well, of the possible suspects, yes. You mean to try to pick them out, huh? That's the idea. Well, will it take long? What I'm getting at is uh, I don't have a car, and I usually take a bus home, and the buses don't run very often late in the evening. Well, we'll see that you get home, Mr. Whitney. Oh, no, I wouldn't want to put you to that trouble. It's pretty far out. No trouble at all? No, I'd rather you take me where I can get a bus. Whatever you say. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know what Emma would think. Might scare her half to death. Well, how's that? If I was to come home in a police car. <laughs> We took the superintendent down to the police building, but he was unable to identify the suspects. The crime lab crew went over the office, but they failed to find any physical evidence. Another week passed. During that time, we had reports that four of the stolen cars had been sold. The circumstances in each case were the same. In each instance, we checked out the address the suspects had used as a front, but without result. Tuesday, July 3rd. What are you doing tomorrow? What? Fourth of July. Oh, that's right. We're having a picnic as soon as I get home from work. Well, I'll be a little late to start out, won't it? We're not going anyplace. I thought you said you were having a picnic. We eat in the backyard. Oh. Every year since I can remember, we've had a Fourth of July picnic. As soon as it gets dark, we shoot off fireworks. Fountains and sparklers and stuff. You and I will set them off. Well, that'll be nice. Safer for the kids that way. All up to have Friday. Yeah? Uh-huh. Oh, you did? Sure. Yeah, it'd be worth checking anyway. You bring him over here? Okay, fine. Yeah, thanks a lot. Ma over in Forgery. They just picked up a printer. He's been cashing a lot of phony checks. Yeah. They checked his plant. Yeah. Found a stack of phony pink slips. <laughs> Sergeant Hal Mott brought the suspect in. He told us that the man's name was Harry Larwell and that he'd been arrested on suspicion of forgery. When Mott and his partner searched the man's home, they found a printing press which the suspect had used for printing fraudulent checks. Frank and I took the suspect to an interrogation room. Under questioning, he admitted the check forgeries, but he denied any knowledge of the automobile registration slips. You printed them, didn't you, Larwell? Well... Well, did you or didn't you? I guess so. Don't you know? Yeah, I printed them. Who for? Nobody. Oh, come off it, Larwell. Honest, I just did it for kicks, for practice. Uh-huh. You think that story will hold up in court? Well, that's the truth. Oh, sure it is. Look, I copped out to the forgery rap. What more do you want? You want to know about those pink slips? I told you I was just working out. For practice? That's right. How many forgery counts they got you on? I don't know for sure. Take a stab at it. Ten or twelve, I guess. You know how much that'll add up to? Not for certain. You can do one to 14 on each count. I'm still young. They can make them run consecutively. Now, come on, Larwell. Why'd you print the slips? Well, suppose I tell you, then what? That's not up to us. The judge will find out, won't he? He'll put it down that way. Well, a couple of guys I know, I did it for them. What guys? Wes and Ralph. Go on. It was their idea. They offered me a deal. A thousand dollars for a hundred slips. Well, I needed the money. Yeah. After I made them up, Ralph said they only wanted 45 of them. We got into a beef about it. He won. What do you mean? I gave him 45 pinks. He gave me 500 bucks. You know where these fellows live? I couldn't pin it down to a street and number. You've got an idea. Apartment someplace out in Hollywood. The girl lived there too? You mean Nikki? That's right. Sure. She's Ralph's wife. Must be with him. When did you see him last? Yesterday. What about? Ralph called me on the phone. Wanted to set up a meeting. Uh-huh. We had a cup of coffee together. All three of you? Just Ralph and Wes. What'd they want? The rest of the pink slips. Said things were going so well they could use them all. Did you make a deal? Yeah, I was supposed to deliver the slips this morning. Your friends kind of interrupted me. Where were you going to meet them? Drugstore on Sunset. Corner of Oakwood and Sunset. What time? About 9.30. Guess I'm not going to make it. Well, they won't be disappointed. Huh? We'll take your place. <laughs> The 
three suspects were taken into custody. While other teams of detectives questioned the two men, Frank and I interrogated the Prescott woman. All right if I smoke? Sorry with us. Thanks. You ready to tell us about him, Miss Prescott? Anything you want to know. All right, let's start with the stolen cars. I'm afraid I'm going to need an ashtray. Right in front of you. The police think of everything, don't they? We try. Now about the cars. Is that what Ralph's been up to? It wouldn't surprise me. I'll bet it wouldn't. I never really trusted him, Wes either, for that matter. Mm-hmm. Of course, they never told me a thing about it. Oh, sure. No, really, Sergeant. Why, if I'd known they were breaking the law, I'd have reported it myself. Even my own husband. I wouldn't stand for anything like that. Then why were you in on it, too? You've got no right to accuse me. Just because a woman's married to a man, you can't blame her for what her husband does. Three of the victims made phone calls to fictitious dealers. They talked to a woman. She was supposed to be a switchboard operator. <laughs> I assure you, I have never worked a switchboard in my life. There wasn't any switchboard. Exactly. But you were on the other end of the phone. Wouldn't that be rather difficult to prove? Your husband and his pal have been running dummy officers all over town, and we can put you in a half a dozen of them. I've tried to be a good wife, Sergeant. I've spent a lot of time with Ralph. Yeah. I guess I was wrong about him. But when you're in love, it's easy to make mistakes. I'm sure you know what I mean, Sergeant. Yeah. I'm not responsible for my husband's actions any more than he's responsible for mine. Now that I know what he really is, of course, that washes us up. Actually, I'm grateful the whole thing came out. I wouldn't want to go on living a lie. Then why don't you stop lying? I'd get angry if I thought you were serious. You listen to me, Miss Prescott. You're in this up to your neck. You think your husband would be happy with you running around loose while he's doing a stretch in prison? Ralph wouldn't want an innocent person to suffer. Least of all me. And I'm sure the police feel the same way. Don't you, Sergeant? What about Wes Bolton? What about Wes? You think he's going to deal you out, too? He might. You got them both on your side, is that it? Everybody's on my side, Sergeant. Not quite. Oh, come on now. I'm not so bad. I don't mean to brag, but I've always been a popular girl. People take to me. I don't know why, but they just do. Even you. I'll bet you could like me if you'd give yourself half a chance. Could I? Sure. Why don't you relax? What have you got to lose? Ralph will be out of circulation for quite a while. Yeah. Well, then. So will you. <laughs> trial was held in Department 97, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspects were tried and convicted of Grand Theft Auto, five counts. Grand Theft Auto is punishable by imprisonment for a period of from one to ten years in the state penitentiary. Harry Francis Larwo was tried and convicted of forgery, eight counts. He is now serving his term in the state penitentiary, San Quentin, California.
Thank <laughs> you.